Hello viewers, I'm here today to talk about our item 70115, our roof mount cargo rack. Uh, I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to easily assemble this, assemble this product. So upon unboxing the item, you will find that our rack is split up into three sections. You'll have the rear piece, the middle piece, and the front piece. You can identify the front piece because it has the window deflector on the front with our Max Paul logo, uh, and the rear piece does not have the wind deflector. Um, and then these are also the other pieces that will come in the box. You'll have four U-bars, you should have four plastic knobs, four rubber caps, four plastic spacers, you should have four small rubber gaskets, four larger rubber gaskets, and four metal racks. Also, there will be about 12 screws and 12 washers. The instruction manual will say that there are 12 washers and 12 screws. However, four of them are gonna be on the window deflector. So you might, if the window deflector is on the rack already, then you should only have 12 of washers and screws in the bag. Also, uh, before we put the item together, I suggest that you guys get a rubber mallet um, and our screws are Phillips heads, and I strongly rep recommend that you find a Phillips head that fits perfectly to the Phillips screw because we're gonna be screwing these into metal and you're gonna need a little bit of force. And if you try too hard and the Phillips head isn't right for the screw, then you'll strip the screw. So make sure that you find a screw that fits, or a, a screwdriver that fits the screw. So let's begin. So like I said, we identified the front and the rear. And uh, what we're gonna do first before we connect the middle piece to the front, we're gonna take our rubber gaskets. So we have four large rubber gaskets and four smaller rubber gaskets. We're gonna slide the small rubber gaskets onto the small part of the bar. And you want to push it in all the way because there's a hole about here that you're going to need to screw these two pieces together. So the rubber gasket is slid to the side so that you can screw the pieces together and then you can pull the rubber gasket back over after it's assembled. So those are the two small ones. This is the large one. Okay, so the first step is done. We've applied the gaskets to the middle part of the rack. Okay, so now that we have the rubber gaskets applied to the middle bar, we can now ap apply the middle rack to the front rack. So to do so, we're gonna stick one bar in on one side. And then connect the other side okay and then this is where you're gonna need the mallet so let me get this out of the way so take your mallet try not to push one side in all the way you should be evenly distributing the force Come back to this side, make sure everything's okay. Okay, so now if you come and look close, you can see that the hole from the middle rack is approximately lined up with the hole on the front rack. Now, this is where people are having some issues assembling it. Uh, the middle rack will only fit onto the, onto the front rack one way. 
So if you apply the middle rack to the front rack and you see that the holes don't line up on both sides, then you're gonna wanna take the middle rack back out, flip it around and put it back in and then it should fit. So now that we have this, now that we have this connected, we should uh, put it in its place by applying some screws. So screw and washer. Okay, so we got all four screws in, and now we're gonna wanna secure them in place so that we can continue the job. Okay, so now that we have the middle rack connected to the front rack, now we can continue to attach the, the rear part of the rack. So let's do the same thing. Line them up. Take your mallet, make sure that everything is solid. Okay, so you can see that the holes are lined up again, and same on the other side. So now let's complete the rack. Okay, so now the screws are in, and the point of these gaskets is for you to slide them back over and to cover the screw to hold them in place. However, we didn't apply any oil to this like the instruction manual says, so it's a little more difficult to do, but as you can see, I can do it with my hand. This is supposed to secure the screw and keep it from being damaged. So now that we have the rack put together and we have the gaskets covering the bolts, uh, we can now move on to the next step, which is applying the spacers so that you can attach this to the crossbars on the roof of your car. So the first step is you're gonna have to take the four plastic spacers that we were given. And the way this is gonna work is you're gonna take the spacer with the, with the fillets on the top, and you're gonna apply it through the bottom of the rack, and it should simply snap into place. Okay, so there are two things that you're gonna wanna be mindful of in this step. Uh, the Main purpose of this step is so that you can get these aligned with the crossbars uh, on your car. So now we have the roof rack, the roof rack uh, placed on top of a roof uh, so that we can show you how the rack connects to the crossbars of the roof. So as you can see, we have the plastic spacers uh, lined up perpendicular to the crossbar of the car. And the way that this is gonna work is uh, the rack is, uh, comes with a U-bar that's designed to fit up to uh, from 0 0.6 inches to 1.75 inches uh, thicknesses of different crossbars. So we're gonna take the U-bar 
and bring it up through the bottom. And then you're gonna take the metal bracket and place it like so. So now you can see how the rack attaches to the crossbar. And what you're gonna do is take the metal knobs or the plastic knobs and screw them in. So you want to tighten it to make sure that it's locked into place. Okay, so I'm installing the last clamp. So now they're all installed. So now we have the rack installed to the top of a Toyota Sequoia. Um, as you can see, it's actually pretty solid. I'm shaking the whole car with it. And well, that's our video on how to install our item 70115 150 pound capacity roof rack. So thanks for watching and enjoy our products.